Hi, I recently posted a poll to find out what is your favorite hybrid string setup for you hybriders out there. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers that came in with the votes that I received so far. And I gave uh, people five choices. So coming in in number one at 31% was a polyester main and polyester cross. And these are two different polyesters. Number two at 30%, which was really close, uh, natural gut mains and a polyester cross. Coming in at number three at 23% is a polyester main and a synthetic or a multi-cross. Then at number four, it dropped down to 9% where you have a polyester main and natural gut cross. And at number five at 7%, a synthetic or multi-main and a polyester cross. So it's actually nice to see that the polyester polyester hybrid came in first uh, because I've been experimenting with that myself. And um, as I prepare my rackets, I, uh, I am going to be stringing it with my favorite string setup. Uh, I won't reveal what that is at this moment. And I asked my friend, uh, Kent Okamura, uh, he has a YouTube channel called Open Court, to send me what his favorite polyester polyester hybrid. Hey, how's it Kent? Thanks for collaborating with me on this mystery matchup hybrid string playtest and review. With the popularity of poly poly hybrids, I thought it would be fun if you sent me something without telling me what it is, and I do the same, and we play test and review them on our videos. So before I tell you what the strings are that I'm sending, I can tell you this much that the mains are thicker than the crosses. And here are three reasons why I feel this thick thin combination works well in a hybrid. So number one is uh, you get the durability and control from the mains because the mains are the working strings. Number two, the cross strings, being that it's thinner, will give you more pop or power which play the role as the supporting strings. And number three, as for spin, here's my theory on this thick thin combination and how it can enhance the spin potential. All right, I'm going to use these props to demonstrate my point and they're not to scale. So I have a plastic piece here that represents the cross string. So if you install, let's say a thicker main string here, uh, there is um, more of this string popping out from the string bed as compared to if you use the string of the same diameter here, because you can see the difference there that it's really, you know, popping out. So with this popping out occurrence, I feel like the strings have the uh, a potential to really grab the ball more because it's just sticking out more and you have more surface area for that ball to grab onto. So that's going to enhance the uh, string to ball friction and you're going to get good snapback because of the fact that the um, cross string is a thin gauge. So again, you're going to increase the ball to string friction and you're still getting good snap back here. So I hope that makes sense. Before I come back to you in two weeks, I did want to uh, share with you my initial impressions of this string. Now the mains, it doesn't have any work, so I can't tell what it is, but it's definitely something I haven't strung before. It is a twisted polyester. Now that I'm starting the crosses, uh, these strings actually have the name on it, so I know exactly what it is. And I can tell you this much, it's a 1.20 millimeter string. So I find this very interesting because the string set that I sent Kent is very similar to what he sent me. So I'll go ahead and finish up this racket. All right, so let me tell you what I've done so far with these rackets. After I strung them up, I played the next day, about a set and a half on each racket. Then I was teaching with it for this entire week. And today I thought I'd do a fun skills test where I'll do five different skills and test these two rackets out. All right, so I got both of these rackets. I'm gonna be testing it on feel and I'm gonna try and drop it right into that ball hopper here. So I'll take a few on the, these strings and then I'll take a few on these strings and we'll see how I do. Here we go. Oh, that was close. I gotta at least hit the basket. 
but I'm hoping I can get it in there. There it is! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try the other racket now and see if I can do the same. That was on the first try. All right, so for my next skills test, I'm gonna be practicing, or not practicing, I'm gonna actually execute, hopefully, uh, a short backhand slice. And this is a shot that I like to use on my return to serve when the server is serving and balling. So here we go. All right. All right, so I just finished hitting with Kent's string setup and I got on the fourth try. I don't know if I got lucky, but I'm gonna try and match that on this, my string setup. <laughs> there we go. Oof. Ah! All right, so here's a fun shot I like to hit. And this is a double shot because I'm aiming for the alley. In fact, the shallow part of the alley. So uh, typically if I get pulled out wide and I see my uh, opponent up at the net, I'll sometimes go for this angle. So I'm gonna try and I'll give myself 10 attempts and see how much I get for each racket. All right, I'm starting off with uh, Kent's string setup and I got 10 attempts, here we go. That's one, two, three, oh, good. four, five, oh, boy. All right, I got five with that racket. All right, I got my string set up and here's my 10 attempts. One. Two. Three. That was wide. Three. Oh my, here we go, four, five, well I guess it's a tie. For this skills test, I'll be hitting my forehand angled volley right to that ball hopper. And this is a fun shot to hit in doubles. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, even with the hopper, if it bounces and hit it, it counts, or if it goes in, even better. All right, here we go. For my serve skills test, I'm going to be hitting my kick serve and I'm on the ad court. So what I'm trying to do is hit it wide. There's a target right there with a cone and there's a ball placed on it. So if I hit it, it's an automatic win. But really what I'm trying to do is kick it wide and hit the side fence. So I'm going to serve 10 with my string set up and we'll see how I do. Oh, 
that almost hit it. Didn't hit the side fence though. Oof. Oof. Ooh. There it is. All right, so I got that on my seventh ball. All right, so I got Kent string set up here. Well, I got it. And that was on the seventh ball too. Before I do a quick recap on today's skills test challenge, I did want to thank Jim for helping me feed me the balls. And I did want to apologize for the audio difficulties I was having on a couple of clips. So I started off with my backhand slice angle trying to hit it short. And I wanted to see how many attempts it would take me to get it in the hopper. So on Ken's string setup, I did on the fourth try. And then on mine, I got in the first. I think I got lucky. So on that one, my string setup won. On the second, I was hitting that um, mid-court slice back end, trying to hit the service line. And on that one, I gave myself 10 tries. And I got it once with uh, Kent's string setup, and I never could get it on mine. So Kent, your string setup won that one. On the third, I did the forehand topspin angle into the alley, and I gave myself 10 tries, and it came out a tie. Both had five out of 10. Then on the fourth skills test, I, I hit my forehand volley. I was trying to angle it near the alley. And uh, that's where Kent's string set up. I got five out of 10. And then on mine, I got four. So Kent, your string set up on that one. Then finally on my serve, I was trying to use my kick serve and hit it wide. Uh, hopefully, um, hoping to hit the side fence. I never did, but I did hit the target on the seventh try on both of these rackets. So that was a tie. So if you tally up the score, Kent, your string setup won in this skills test. So what I plan to do next with these is I'm gonna play a match and I'll start off with the first set with one string and then the second with the other and we'll see how that goes. But so far with these strings, they're really close in terms of feel. Uh, with my string setup, I feel like I'm a little bit more connected to the ball and it's probably because I've been using it longer. And then with Kent's, I feel like the ball comes off a little bit faster. It's a little bit more crisp. Uh, that's not a bad thing, so uh, it's good for that. And mine's a little bit more muted if you compare the two. So what I also plan to do is I'm gonna continue to track tension maintenance by taking readings of the string bed deflection, uh, dynamic tension, and string tension. So I'll see you in a week. How's it, Albert? Thank you for letting me come on your channel and being a part of this collab review. I had a lot of fun working with you as always, and I hope you enjoyed the hybrid sets I sent to you. So I would like to reveal now the two strings that I chose to send you for this hybrid review. Those strings are the Ytex Quadro Twist and the Yonex Polytour Fire. So for this hybrid, the Ytex Quadro Twist I recommended as the main strings and the Yonex Polytour Fire I recommended as the cross strings. And both of these strings are in my top five polyester strings. I released a video a little while back naming my top five current polyesters. Both of these strings were in my top five. In fact, the Quadro Twist is my number two favorite polyester currently. And I love both of these strings because they both maintain tension well, as well as maintaining that um, crisp feel that I really like. I like using a lot of touch, a lot of finesse, a lot of my game is oriented in the front court at the net and I like to place balls and volleys in those uh, spaces between my opponents. Both of these strings allow me to play that kind of touch game. The Ytex Quadro Twist especially, I'm really surprised at how responsive this string is. So I recommended this for the mains. It's also shaped and twisted so it gets a lot of bite and I really wanted to um, get that uh, spin for my kick serve as well as my baseline game. So I recommended this in the mains and the Polytour Fire is a very good cross string in my opinion because it has that silicone oil infusion which allows the string, the main string, to continue sliding and snapping. And the Polytour Fire is a great cross string because it doesn't shave into the mains. It's a simple round poly but it's also very slippery so it allows the mains to snap back and maintain that tension and the spin potential for a long period of time.
So full disclosure, at the moment of filming this segment, I have not actually tried this as a hybrid yet. Individually, I love both of these strings, but I'm going to string this up with the Quadro Twist in the mains, Polytour Fire in the cross. I'm going to test it out and do a full review on this hybrid on my channel, comparing it side by side to the hybrid that you sent me, Albert. So everyone watching out there, look forward to that review as well as Albert's review and opinions of my hybrid as well. So thank you so much, Albert. So without further ado, here's my mystery hybrid string setup. On the mains, I have Babolat RPM Rough in the 17 gauge 1.25 millimeter. And for the crosses, it's a Prince Vortex 18 in a 1.20 millimeter. I've been using this combination for the last three months and uh, here are some attributes why I feel these two strings work well together. So on the mains with the RPM Rough, if you haven't used this before, uh, it, it looks very similar to the Luxalon uh, ALU Power Rough, uh, but it is softer and it is softer than the regular RPM Blast. Uh, what's really good about it is that it has one of the highest spin potential as rated by uh, Tennis Warehouse University, so I like that. And for the uh, Prince Vortex, it's a hexagonal shaped string, but the edges are not very sharp, so I like the fact that it allows the mains to snap back really well. So Kent, I know that you play test and review a lot more strings than I do, so I hope you enjoyed these strings. And I look forward to watching your video review on my mystery string setup, the Babolat RPM Rough 17, and Prince Vortex 18. All right, so it's been two weeks of play testing and playing a match. And in that match, I played one set with uh, one set of strings and the second with the others. And Jim and I did manage to win that match. So I guess these strings passed that test. So next I have uh, some readings on tension maintenance where I measured the string bed deflection, dynamic tension, and string tension. So let's check it out. So what I have here are my two rackets that I strung both at 42 pounds, one with my hybrid and one with Kent's hybrid. The uh, mystery hybrid setup on mine was the Babolat RPM Rough in 1.25 and the Prince Vortex in the cross is 1.20. And then on Kent's hybrid, the Ytex Quadratist Twist at 1.26 and Yonex Polytour Fire at 1.20. So. When I didn't know what the strings were when Ken sent it to me, I, I felt like it was very similar to what I, what I had. So uh, I like to see what his reaction is when he finds out what mine is. Uh, but anyway, we're going to look at the initial reading right off of the machine. And you can see that they're identical. If we take a look at the string bed deflection, both at 42, dynamic tension 29, 29, and the string tension at 42. Now I let them sit overnight and on the next day when I came in, I took another reading. So there's a little bit of difference here, uh, mainly in the string bed deflection. So it's just by one unit though. So you can see how this dropped to 38, where this one held a little bit better at 39. But interestingly, the uh, dynamic tension and the string tension were uh, matching here. Now uh, what I did is that I hit for an hour and um, took another reading and you could see that this dropped three units here, this one dropped three, and then you see a one unit here difference and one unit here difference. So uh, again, there's not a whole lot of difference. Right now, Kent's hybrid setup is holding up a little bit better. So uh, what I did is after one week, and this was including that skills challenge that I did, uh, we'll take a look at another reading. So. This 32 and minus 10, this is the, the difference right here from the initial reading. So what I'm doing is comparing all of these numbers right here in week one to the initial numbers that I was getting right after it came off of the machine. So at 32, it's a minus 10. Um, the DT was minus five and the string tension minus seven. So we're gonna compare the same numbers down here so this nine was one unit less. Uh, the 25 here was uh, one unit less and this 36 pounds was also one unit less. So uh, what I did is I, I played a match with it the next uh, week and this is what I got here. 
So you can see that actually the uh, the readings actually held. So the 32, the 24, and 35 here match matches up here. And uh, on Kent's hybrid down here, the 33, oh, this one dropped actually one unit. So this went down to 24, and then it matched up. Uh, that converted to 35 pounds. So now you can see that the DT and the string tension are matching, but then the string bed deflection is still one unit higher. So I think overall in this play test and testing the string maintenance, uh, tension maintenance, uh, these two string setups match up really well. So what was my key takeaway from this mystery matchup of hybrid string setups? Well, I can tell you that Kent and I happen to be on the same page. On his string setup he had a twisted polyester on the mains and i had a textured one on the crosses we both went with a thinner gauge his was round and mine had a slight shape to it so if any of you are experimenting or using this thick thin combination i'd love to hear from you or if this will inspire you to try it uh, please leave a comment down below and kent thanks for collabing with me in this fun video and make sure to check out his review that's releasing soon, and I'll leave a link down below. Or better yet, subscribe to his channel so you won't miss out. Thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your strings play.